Hello, I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at the 16 page short story in this in this Planet of Chaos collection by John Shirley called In the Cornelius Arms. Uh, it's set, uh, this collection is set in the Eternal Champion. I bought this collection when I was doing a deep dive into it uh, back about in college, uh, but I never read it because these short stories are not actually by these people and such uh, as a reminder. But now that I'm going back and doing a deep dive into this, I'm taking a look at this, this is 1996. A collection for you folks, which I'll link to in the comments below uh, for you folks. This is a, um, uh, 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 all these short stories were written uh, by it, by for this collection. So they're not collected, uh, they were written for this. That's kind of cool uh, and interesting. Uh, this one in the in the Cornelius Arms is is the Cornelius Arms is a location uh, where people of uh, various uh, decadence and such meet in San Francisco. It's run by Eternal Champion, uh, by Jerry Cornelius. Uh, he is a character that was created by Michael Moorcock. Uh, he is a very, very popular character. Put him on the map in major ways, uh, and a lot of it is the reason why a lot of British people sort of feel like Michael Moorcock is more of a literary writer uh, than a uh, just a genre writer, if you will, uh, as well as things like uh, Behold the Man and Gloriana, stuff like that that have. Byzantium and Durst, sort of things, feel like they really sort of, you know, get past uh, this sort of normal genre writing and put them on a map in a major way, right? Uh, so that's why he's, he's more of a, a bigger character than just these sort of, uh, you know, science fiction fantasies genres would be right here, so, so forth. Um, but I've never read it. Uh, I've just, I, it's, it's, I just, right, it's, it's it's also where some of the cyberpunk stuff got started and some of that stuff got started too. Well, John Gibson here, as as who writes this, is obviously one of the founders of, of the cyberpunk genre, right? Uh, and such. He's also he's a big name too, uh, uh, and such. And he is a uh, he's written tons of things uh, in various different genres, from erotica to adventure uh, to lots of other stuff too, right? science fiction uh and more right uh so this is in the eternal champions uh, set again in that in the, in the cornelius arms which is where the title of this thing comes from and it's run by jerry cornelius if you will uh for you folks uh, so what's basically happening uh in this short story uh, is that we are following a girl named beth who is the daughter of a major uh, economic uh, corporation in the in the area of it's, it's a tech company and they develop something called the macrochip which is sort of the next level of a microchip uh, and such and see she brings it uh, to the cornelius arms uh, to give it to jerry cornelius for his purposes what he does with it uh, what winds up happening afterwards uh, we'll find out later for folks uh, but that's basically what's happening uh, in the early parts and Beth is our point of view character, uh, if you will, for this context. And there's a lot of things that are happening. There's a lot of different cultures of different, you know, uh, of different affected youth, like goth kids and such. I remember it's the mid '90s, right, when it's written. So it's trying to be contemporary for that time period, but it's it's not. It's a very mature short story. Uh, it's definitely for adult audiences. There's a lot of sex. There's a lot of stuff I like that drugs stuff like that that's being taken on a regular basis uh, stuff like that so that's kind of, so it's definitely something like that if you will it's fun I, I i liked it but i felt like it was a little too uh into, into the mature audiences so for shock value rather than like like a horror film uh, that's a rated r just just shocks you rather than a rated one that builds atmosphere over time right that's probably going to be saying it's a true classic of the genre right uh and such and i prefer it's really more of just a shock value if you will uh, for our folks so it's 16 pages long i read it but it's not really something that i think was good uh it's and again i'm not familiar with, with the material but it was the next because again i never read this stuff uh, but it's the next short story in the collection so i figured i'd give johnny gibson a chance right here and so forth uh for the community arms but uh, i thought that you know he's worked well written uh and so forth it's just it shows i feel like it's just a shock by short story rather right? than a good solid use of, of stuff right so i'm giving this probably more like a five out of ten it's fine it's well written and such uh but it's just not like this massively great short story right uh so i think it's probably i think it's better uh, than, than, the, than the previous shock value version of uh, Michael Moorcox's uh, dark and edgy uh, Elric uh, 
in 1996 was turned into a darker year and edgier version, which was just felt more like a spoof. I think it's better than that one, The Inquiry. Uh, that was the, the third short story in this collection, if I remember correctly, or maybe it was the second. Uh, but I don't think it's I don't think this is better than any of the other ones of other than that one because it's just that it's actually done by you know somebody who actually has something to tell. If there's a point to this short story, even if I disagree with it, right, it's got a point to say, right? It's something something to say, right? About our worlds, right? It has it has an interesting thing. So there you are. That is. Uh, John Gibson's uh, In the Arms, in, in the Carnelian's Arms. So there you go. I'll, I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read this? If so, what would you think about it? If you agree or disagree with my, my, my fight, I'll tell us talk about it in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed this, why not hit that subscribe button? Because there's going to be a lot more of these to follow. Uh, and also, uh, as a reminder, um, we're doing a deep dive into this because he was so influential, right? modern fantasy and science fiction right uh like with the law versus chaos concept on all these different planes the multiversal planar concept right that's happening these this that various uh between law and chaos that, that sort of inspired a lot of things uh, his stuff is so influential um, and he, like I said, his Elric and Stormbringer were heavy, heavy hits uh, during his era too, right? Made, made the cut uh, to stuff. And even Independent Dicks and Gary Gygax, right? He's mentioned. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing, you know, sort of a deep dive into this stuff and, uh, and going back and rereading a lot of these sorts of novels, national stories are doing this. A uh, question for you folks. Uh, so there you are. Um, so it, so as a reminder, channel's name is the worst thing about new books, which is a quote by a French philosopher, Jacques Schubert, who said that the worst thing about new books was that they kept us from reading the old ones. And so an older short story like this from 1996, that's more than 25 years ago, that's definitely... No, something is pretty cool for me to go out and go back and read for you folks, right? Uh, so there you are. I'm going to, so finally, I just want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing and watching my video because we all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me, that's incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.